The most revealing thing about the latest NATO counter-drone trials in France wasn't the venue, the guest list, or even the storm front that rolled in off the Atlantic. It was the single clean intercept that separated one entrant from a crowded field. While multiple systems took their turn at the Biscarros range under the supervision of France's Defense Procurement Authority, only an interceptor linked to Ukraine's defense tech ecosystem, marketed by Alta Ares, managed to close the distance and defeat the target drone in live conditions. That outcome mattered because the weather was bad enough that a cautious program office might have scrubbed the event. Instead, evaluators flew as scheduled and the conditions became a ruthless filter on what worked and what didn't. What stood out was not just that Alta Ares scored, it was how it scored. The company's design leans on a perception and guidance stack called Pixel Lock, an onboard AI trained to handle identification, tracking, and terminal engagement with minimal human input. In a benign environment, that promise can sound like brochure language. In a squall, with wind gusts, rain scatter, and moments when the target briefly dips into cluttered backgrounds, the difference between claims and algorithmic resilience gets exposed. Pixel Lock kept the solution stable long enough to align the intercept geometry, and the aircraft did the rest. If anything, that is the subtext of the trial, autonomy is no longer the novelty, robustness is the currency. Alta Ares organizes its interceptor family into short dash, medium dash, and long-range variants, but each is built around the same core principle, compress the kill chain against small, low-signature threats that are cheap to launch and expensive to miss. That means fast launch procedures, aggressive acceleration to cut down time to merge, and terminal guidance tuned to air on the side of decisive closure rather than theatrical flybys. The critical advantage lies in lowering cognitive burden and latency. Human operators still decide when to engage, but the navigation and pursuit logic, once authorized, is designed to remain sticky through turbulence and evasive maneuvers. In practice, that translates into a machine that can fight its way through the atmosphere as well as through the target's countermaneuvering. The trials also reflected a broader political and industrial reality. NATO has made a point of pairing member state companies with Ukraine's rapidly iterating defense startups, and the Alta Ares program sits directly in that lane. Ukrainian specialists have been involved in shaping requirements and validating behavior during testing. More importantly, they are exporting a mindset formed by daily combat, iterate fast, instrument everything, and close the loop from telemetry to code commits in weeks, not years. No glossy slide deck can replicate what it means to chase FPV swarms at treetop height or to sweat down loitering munitions in gusty crosswinds while jammers paint the air with RF noise. The software instincts that emerge from that pressure cooker are visible in systems like Pixel Lock, where target reacquisition, occlusion handling, and false positive control are not optional niceties but survival traits. The interceptor was conceived with specific adversaries in mind, notably shahid slash type loitering munitions that Russia has used in large numbers. Those threats exploit endurance and low-cost mass to saturate defenses. To counter them, an interceptor must be cheap enough to field in volume, quick off the rails, and confident in terminal guidance even when the target is small and erratic. Alta Ares' concept places a premium on modularity and maintainability, the airframe can be serviced quickly, sensors are accessible, and the autonomy stack is updatable in the field. That last point matters for users who cannot wait for quarterly release cycles. When operators push back data showing a specific failure mode, say, a tendency to break lock against certain propeller flash frequencies in rain, the engineering team needs the legal and technical latitude to patch, test, and redeploy within days. One reason the Biscaros result resonated beyond the test range is that it implicitly redefines baseline requirements for European air defense. Drones don't pause for blue skies, and neither can the systems tasked with defeating them. The trial storm became a real-world stand-in for chaos, an index of how sensor fusion copes with environmental stress, how control laws react to gusts and wake, how trackers recover after a momentary blind spot. In that crucible, the Alta Ares solution functioned as advertised. 
It wasn't so much a victory lap as a data point, but it was a persuasive one that will shape procurement conversations where works in the rain graduates from marketing line to threshold criterion. Industrial geography is part of the narrative as well. While this class of interceptor has previously been built by several Ukrainian firms, Alta Ares has stood up production in western France, framing the move as a reinforcement of European defense sovereignty. The phrase can sound grandiose, but the logic is practical, proximity to customers shortens logistics tails and accelerates sustainment, while maintaining a live tether to Ukrainian engineering keeps the product infused with frontline feedback. The company insists the configuration will remain internationalized, manufactured in France with design evolution driven by Ukrainian combat lessons. That duality, if sustained, could prove more valuable than raw unit counts because it embeds iteration speed inside a European industrial base that is often criticized for being too slow and too siloed. For defense planners and acquisition executives, the implications extend beyond one vendor's success. First, the bar for counter UAS systems must be set by real weather, real clutter, and real deception, not sanitized ranges. That may mean budgeting for more frequent, more punishing trials where failure is common but informative. Second, the integration of Ukrainian data and expertise is a strategic multiplier. Western programs have animation-rich concept phases, Ukraine brings telemetry from thousands of engagements, including rare edge cases that torture test algorithms. The question is no longer whether to absorb those lessons, but how to codify the flow, contract vehicles that fund rapid updates, certification paths that don't strangle speed, and export rules aligned with coalition realities. There is also a doctrinal thread running through the Alta Ares story. Countering cheap, proliferated drones cannot rely on exquisite interceptors that bankrupt defenders on exchange ratios. Nor can it rely on jamming alone, given the increasing use of autonomous navigation and home-on-jam logic. The credible path is layered, sensing that cues quickly, autonomy that reduces delay between detection and pursuit, and interceptors that are responsive enough to win the geometry. Pixel Lock's autonomy is already being adapted for Ukrainian units to blunt FPV raids and mitigate guided glide bomb drops, where shaving seconds off the engagement timeline turns near misses into hard kills. What the French trial suggests is that those same design instincts travel well, they are not Ukraine-specific hacks but generalizable competencies. None of this guarantees that Alta Ares will dominate procurement, or that competitors won't close the gap. Test campaigns are snapshots, and today's advantage can evaporate if rivals absorb the same lessons and move quickly. But the signal is clear, when the weather turned hostile, only one interceptor maintained lock, preserved pursuit, and finished the job. In an era where air defense is becoming a numbers game fought at low altitude and high tempo, that combination of autonomy and reliability is an edge worth paying for. If Europe wants counter-drone systems that can stand the watch in any season, it will favor designs forged where the learning curve is steepest, on ranges that don't cancel for rain, and on front lines that never close for the weekend.